Hello, welcome to the Mark Janot Show, the cybersecurity show. In this video, Mac versus Windows. Mac versus Windows. Which one is better? So I'm going to answer that question, right? By talking about, you know, comparing the quality, the internals, the operating system, software between the two of them, right? And then I'm going to end this video with, you know, how can you choose which one? Like what, what is going to go into your decision-making process when it comes to Mac versus Windows? So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. So build quality, right? Versus variety when it comes to Mac versus Windows. Now there is no denying that Apple hits physical hardware out of the park. Undeniable, right? From a purely aesthetic and subjective viewpoint, I'm not subjective because this is Mac Pro City, baby. <laughs> MacBooks are gorgeous, right? They look great, they feel great. They, you know, th you know that boxy industrial minimalist design feels as if it was worth 2,000, 5,000 or more, right? So ever since the debut of the M2 MacBook Air, uh, you know, in June 2022, every MacBook except the low-end MacBook Air M1 has followed the same fastidious design. Don't forget the actual quality you'll get with a Mac, right? Take the hinges as an example. You can open up any Mac with one hand, right? One hand. The screen opens up while the base sits as is. Also, the screen stays firmly in whichever position you left it in. There is no wobble, wobbly, wobble, 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 right? There is no uh, dropping. Apple has nailed the hinges and few Windows OEMs have come close. Dell's dual clutch hinges on its XPS lineup is one exception. You'll, you'll also get an amazing keyboard now that Apple has ditched those awful butterfly keys. Uh, you will appreciate the latest Magic Keyboard, whether you're a coder or a writer. There's nothing else like a, you know, an available, you know, its availability on a laptop, right? The same goes with the Force Touch trackpad, hands on the best haptic touchpad on any laptop. The haptic feedback, the swipe gestures, the force click feature, few Windows laptop, laptops have uh, a touchpad as good as, you know, a MacBook's. The HP Spectre X36014 is one, you know, Windows laptop that comes close. It comes close, but it ain't, 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 ain't all that, you know what I'm saying? So, but Windows laptops have an ace up their sleeves regarding build quality which is variety. The top Windows laptops share the same sort of industrial design language as MacBooks, whether that's, you know, the uh, Asus ZenBook, the Dell XPS line, or even Microsoft Surface Laptop. Now let's get into the internals, right? You'll need to consider what kind of computing power you want from your laptop when choosing between MacBooks and Windows laptops, okay? So MacBooks use Apple, uh, Apple Silicon uh, ARM chips, and these are getting more powerful by the day. They are able to combine graphics and processing into one highly efficient chip, which gives you extraordinary battery life. And unless you're pushing the fastest MacBook Pros with demanding creativity or apps, you'll barely hear the fans spool up unless you're using a completely silent fanless MacBook Air. On the other hand, Windows laptops mostly use either Intel or AMD processors and NVIDIA or AMD graphics cards. In the most powerful Windows laptops, this can mean a greater power draw and lower battery life while the fans constantly run. Some Windows laptops run cooler and quieter and some are also fanless, but also they are generally not as powerful. Overall, Windows laptops provide more versatility so you can play more games and download more programs thanks to the x86 architecture and super fast discrete GPUs. Also, some Windows laptops are switching to ARM chips, so this field isn't as divergent as it used to be. In regards to the operating system, right, the meat on the bones of the MacBooks versus the Windows laptop debate is the respective operating systems. For MacBooks, Mac OS is a gorgeous and mature Unix-based system, right? It, ha it hasn't changed in the past 20 years. Aside from some tweaks and visual overhauls, the entire OS is uniform across programs. This means the menu items, buttons, and overall look and feel of every app are consistent. For example, you'll always find the file menu in the same place no matter which program you use. Windows is a completely different animal, right? 
It has undergone several major overhauls in the past few years, with Windows 10 and Windows 11 being the most significant. Windows 11 is a little Mac OS-like with a centered taskbar, rounded corners, and a sleek, glassy look. Both Windows 10 and Windows 11 look as nice as Mac OS, so it's under the hood where you'll find the biggest differences. However, many past Windows versions have been left in the system. You'll find subsystem control panels dating back to the Windows XP era. The Windows code itself is a Frankenstein monster of you know years of different versions of all matched together, right? Each app you use will have its own look and feel unless it's from the same developer, such as Microsoft's Office Productivity Suite. Menu items can be wherever the developer wants to put them. Windows 11 is trying to bring some comf uh, comfort right? to the you know the overall system uh, but it's a jungle out there both operating systems are equally good from a visual perspective but mac os is generally superior <laughs> in terms of ease of use and offers a uniform unix environment right uh, for those users who need it please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and like button if you're enjoying this video right please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and this like button, I'll gladly appreciate it. Now let's get into the software ecosystem between these two powerhouses of devices. So both Windows, laptops, and MacBooks come with a healthy ecosystem of first-party apps such as email, calendars, note-taking, and reminders. Apple's offerings on MacBooks are still bare bones. Notes and reminders have come a long way in the past five years, but still don't match up to many third-party apps. Apple Mail is dismal despite Apple's mediocre updates since macOS Ventura. Where MacBooks really shine is in the eco, you know, the Apple ecosystem, specifically thanks to the continuity functionality. Using an iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, AirPods, anything Apple really with a MacBook is a joy. You can airdrop large files from one device to another nearly instantly. Your app, your AirPods connect without you needing to lift a finger. Continuity allows such perks as copying a link on your iPhone and simply pasting on your MacBook. iMessage on Mac is great and Apple Keychain means your passwords carry over across all your Apple devices. Windows laptops on the other hand are much more open and this is where the entire Windows platform really shines thanks to Microsoft's phone link app for Android and iOS. You can get a lot of the same functionality on your Windows laptop as you would on a MacBook such as messages and file transfers up to a limit, right? Samsung phones in particular work extremely well on Windows. So you'll get a Microsoft's excellent first party apps built right in. Microsoft's productivity software is light years ahead of Apple. Even the base Windows mail client is more functional and easier to use than Apple's horrible mail app. OneNote is a beast and possibly one of the greatest productivity apps ever created. Best of all, every Microsoft app is available on every platform. So let's get into the last thing. How can you choose Mac or Windows? Let's get into it. If you choose a MacBook over a Windows laptop, be sure you're okay with the apps available on Mac OS. You give up diversity of accessories and apps available with Windows, as well as the, abil the you know, ability to really game, but you get a polished, good looking computing experience. If you want greater diversity, then look at Windows laptops. You'll find more than just Apple's clamshell form factors, such as two-in-ones and dual screen laptops. You'll have you know, so much more freedom to use machines how you want. If you want to connect your Android smartphone with a laptop, then you shouldn't be considering a MacBook. So that's what I have for you today. Please take a moment to hit the subscribe button and the like button. Please take a moment to hit the subscribe button and the like button. I appreciate your viewership. See you in the next video.